Hi crypto fans, welcome to CCS Cryptocurrency State. My name is Santiago, I'm a web developer and investor. And in today's video, we are going to see how to manage airdrops with multiple wallets. Many of you have been asking me that, so I will share a little bit what I do usually for airdrops, how I manage this, and everything that you can do with my strategy. Of course, this is only what I do, doesn't mean that you cannot do another stuff and another methods to manage your wallets for your airdrops. But in this video, because you asked it, we are going to cover how I manage that and what I recommend you to do in order to don't be blacklisted like a sibling attack for the wallets because that is the danger for the airdrops when you use multiple wallets. So if you are following my videos for airdrops or it's your first time here, this is a very important video for you. Before we begin, please like the video, subscribe to the channel, click the bell to get the notifications and without anything else, let's get into it. Hey guys, many of you are asking me in the comment section about how you manage multiple wallets for the airdrops. So today I want to do this specific video about that. I'm going to share with you what I do right now and how I manage my different airdrops on the wallets. But I also want to tell you that you don't need to do exactly what I do. There are other methods and for no reason I am saying that my method is the best in the internet or in the airdrop world. So have that in mind, I will share only what I do in this video. So the first thing is how you usually manage different wallets. In this article is explained how most of the people manage the different wallets. So if you are in Metamask, you can see this image. Here you can create an account and using the same Metamask extension, you can have multiple accounts here. So this is a more easy and quick method just using one type of wallet, in this case MetaMask, and creating different accounts. Each, each account here is going to have a different address. So that's it. So super easy. You can use each of these addresses to each of these accounts that represent each of them one address. And you can use it to do the different address in each of these addresses. Here, using this method is where usually is the danger that you can be targeted like a blacklist uh, account. But it's not because you are creating multiple accounts here only. That is also because usually many of the different projects that launch airdrops, what they don't want is that you use an automatic bot system to create accounts. And this is the easiest way that the bots can create accounts in Metamask, for example. So if they target the relationship between these different accounts for your MetaMask extension, you are probably probably are going to be blacklisted in all your accounts. And if you are doing a hard work, for example, for the coming Arbitrum airdrop, you are going to be blacklisted and don't receive anything. So this is the method that I avoid. It's the easiest way to have multiple accounts. And guys, not many projects take the difficult task to evaluate if the, if the different addresses are from bots or not. So this is only usually for the very big airdrops. So I am not discarding at all this strategy. This could work also and many people use this method, but I don't want to get this risk. So this is not the method that I use. And what is a sibling attack? Well, sibling attack uses a single node to operate in many active fake identities. And the definition that you can read here is not exactly applied for the crypto airdrop world. But basically, when we call this sibling attack, we are referring that the one person is using multiple entities, meaning multiple wallets, to achieve the airdrop. The most common way to do that is using bots and programming software to do that. So a project doesn't want to give the free money, the free coins to bots. Instead, they want to really reward the community. And that is why they try to focus and reward to wallets that really represent one person activity. What I want to highlight here, guys, is not only what it matters is the method that you use for your wallets and airdrops. If you are using this method or my method, the thing is that the wallets and the transactions related to one address need to be organic. For example, if you are going to apply for the Arbitrum airdrop 
And if you are using an address that only has a specific transactions on Arbitrum, but that address doesn't use, for example, another blockchain, like could be Binance Smart Chain, Polygon, Avalanche, that is starting to seem a little fishy. So usually a normal wallet is going to be used in multiple chains. So they start to track all that with the transactions because in blockchain everything is registered for your account or your address. And using those statics and that information, they start to blacklist people in their airdrops. So it's not only the method that you use, but it's the feel and look of your address as a person and not as a bot that only has a specific transaction for that airdrop. Because we follow many airdrops, usually our wallets are safe because you see a lot of activity in multiple chains if you are using MetaMask or another wallet. So usually I never had the problem that to be blacklisted and not many projects take the job to do that, guys. Many of them have been rewarding bots and they will continue doing it because it's not an easy job for them neither to get those wallets and blacklist it. But for Arbitrum, Optimist did it. They blacklisted more than 15,000 addresses that wanted to participate. So... For me, it's a good idea to don't get the risk that to do that. And that leads us to the second part of the video, this what is my strategy. So in order to put it very simple, this is how I use multiple wallets for airdrops. I am not a graphic designer, so I did this very quickly for you. But basically, I don't have multiple accounts in each of the wallets. I only use one address per wallet extension. Usually, I will put one extension in each browser. So, for example, for Chrome, I have one MetaMask, a Trust Wallet, Coinbase Wallet. Um, there are many other wallets, of course. I just put in some examples here. And then in one device, I will have multiple browsers. Chrome, Firefox, Brave, Edge, even if I don't like it too much. And Safari, if I am using a Mac laptop. And then I will have multiple devices to do my airdrops. A laptop or computer, a smartphone, an iPad. I have actually two laptops dedicated for airdrops. So in this example, if you use three devices and each device you put five browsers and there are many other browsers. And in each browser you use these three wallets, which usually are the most common wallets. You can see here the best scenario in that case, you are going to have 45 unique wallet addresses and these wallet addresses are not going to be related in any way there's no way that someone can relate it a, wa a metamask wallet on chrome extension with a firefox browser using your coinbase wallet these are completely separate wallets and in different browser extensions and different wallet providers so this is completely isolated for each of these wallets. And this is a method that I use. Again, not, not always you can use the same wallet for different airdrops. Right now we have been doing a lot of Aptos airdrops. And in that case, you cannot use yet all these uh, addresses. You need a specific addresses for the Aptos uh, airdrops. So in that case, you probably are not going to have the ability to get 45 unique wallets you may have 10 or 15 but that is okay guys we don't want to really have hundreds or thousands of wallets like those people you are going to be blacklisted on that so for many of the airdrops big important airdrops for example for arbitrum i am not even using 45 but i am using 15 unique addresses so I don't really have any case where I will use 45 wallets. I usually are between 10 and 30 wallets, depending on the type of airdrop. But some of the difficult airdrops, like the Arbitrum airdrop or the current Optimism airdrop for the Quest, I try to get between 10 and 15 wallets with all the steps doing correctly there to get the maximum amount possible. For example, for the optimism airdrop of may 2022 just a couple of months ago if you did all the steps those wallets get around twenty thousand dollars so if you have 10 wallets doing everything correctly you already have there two hundred thousand dollars 
Those are the targets that I will look for this kind of airdrops. And also the current optimism quest to get the 18 NFTs is not an easy one. You actually need to spend a lot of money in transactions and doing stuff there. So I am trying to get 10 wallets with the 18 NFTs, at least 10 wallets, because I think that that is going to be an airdrop of $10,000 probably or more like was the previous one. So if I do this airdrop correctly with the 18 NFTs of optimism in the correct way in 10 wallets, that already signified for me $100,000 in airdrop profit. And I am actually spending a lot of money to do this airdrop, to do these wallets with 18 NFTs. But probably I'm going to spend around $300 or $400 and my reward is going to be $100,000. So the risk reward ratio there it works perfectly. The same happened for Arbitrum or for CK Sync or for Shardium or for Zeta Chain. There are many big projects that are right now that you are not going to need not even close 45 unique wallets. So in this video again guys I am sharing my experience. Another thing to comment here is you always try to use VPNs. Um, be sure that when you participate in airdrops, even in my videos and the airdrops that I post, sometimes I really try to focus and not put any scam project guys, but it could happen to me too. So always divide your wallets in the ones that you use for more risky projects and the ones that you use for more secure projects. For example, the 15 or 10 wallets that I am using for optimizing quests, I am not using it for very rich projects that I am not sure and maybe the tokens or the airdrops look more fishy. So try to have that independence so you don't mix that. And of course guys, I don't have in any of these wallets the money that I have in tokens that I that I have for the long term. So I don't have any of my Bitcoin, Ethereum, Cardano or any of my tokens that I use for trading or even for holding for the long term. I don't have any of those tokens in any of these wallets. I have that in, in hardware wallets or in another wallet that are not even in these devices. So that is also why I don't have too much risk if one of these wallets is hacked because I may lose the opportunity for airdrops, but I don't have really much money. And you can see my videos and my wallet that I use for the video too. I only have the exact amount for the airdrop. I really don't hold money in these wallets. So also that is a recommendation. And try to always to use the VPN if you can afford it to buy one. Or there are free VPNs too that you can search. And again, depending on the project, you may not use Metamask, so you will have less wallets, but or browsers doesn't support the extensions. But basically what you end up having is this. I have one device, then I have different browsers, and in each browser, I have different wallets providers. And each of these have a unique wallet. I don't create multiple accounts in one wallet. And uh, then you can say and use something like this if you want to track your, your progress. Uh, for example, for the Arbitrum airdrop, I did everything in this wallet, I did everything in this wallet, but for example here in this Trust wallet on Firefox on this device, I didn't do the task completely yet. So you can track your progress of airdrops this way. You know that I like Excel files, so you can create one based on this and you can copy this for the different devices that you held. But again, guys, you usually, and I am really dedicated to airdrops, you usually, at maximum, you are going to use 10 to 20 wallets if you are doing it really, really great. Um, there are airdrops that are really, really easy and not so important, like Arbitrum or Optimism, that you can do it really quick. And in those, then, yeah, you may want to use all your wallets to get the, the most uh, big amount of airdrops. But like you can see in many of the posts, usually the posts that talk about multiple wallets not being great uh, ideas because you could be blacklisted if you create multiple accounts in the same wallet extension or same wallet in your computer. So guys, that is basically what I wanted to cover on this video. So again, to show you this, this is basically what I do. 
use one device, different browsers, and in each browser, one extension install it there. Doing this, you could have 45 unique wallets if you require that. Um, guys, that is all for the video. I hope you enjoyed this transparency that I use for this video. This is actually 100% true. So if you find value in this video, please share it in any of your social media. And remember that each time that I do an airdrop video, in the links of the description, you will have the link for the post. And in the post, you have also the video, but you have the steps and everything that you need to do with links to everything there. So for example, this Arbitrum Nova video from yesterday, you can see everything here in the post. And then you have categories if you want to filter of my different videos or different types of airdro airdrops. If you want to follow Arbitrum stuff, you can go to the tags and navigate the website on that way. Guys, that will be all for the video. Again, remember to like the video, subscribe to the channel, click the bell to get the notifications. Put your comments below if you like it, this video and you want me to share more of my stuff with you guys. I really hope that we get all these airdrops and we cash out everything that we are doing in the last two months. And any questions, of course, put it in the comments, put your love there. I really appreciate every of your messages and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.